Hello everybody and welcome to your next XNA game tutorial. In this tutorial, basically you're going to be doing this. You're going to be displaying the current date and then when you press a certain key on the keyboard, it's going to move in the motion. And then when it hits the right part, when it hits this, um, the edge of the screen, it's going to bounce back and forth and so on and so forth. Okay, so how do we do this? First thing, since it's um, and since it, this is basically like the game class, then when you create like um certain variables, you have to make them static. So um, we have to create the static. And if you never learned this in the basics, um, there's a class called the date time class, which has basically everything in it that will get you. It could display the current milliseconds that's going on right now, the current date current time in minutes, the current time in the, the current hour, so on and so forth. And um, the reason why I'm showing you this is this is, can be very uh, um, efficient in games. Um, like, let's say you want to have a day and night system in the game. You can retrieve the person that's playing it, receive their current date and their current time, and then affect your game um, accordingly. Or say you want to uh, find out how many time and minutes they've been playing the total game. There's a way to do this with X and A code, but like with the actual C sharp default code, you can figure out certain things. Now, this is not a part of the X and A library. This is a part of the C sharp programming language. So just so you don't confuse the two. So I just named it um the date time class. I named it um the object date time now and it's equal to date time now so it will display the current date now I made a, str um, a string to actually display the date I named the date and I put um, date time now to long date string so there's a, diff a lot of options to um, the to change to a string we could change it to to long time string to display the actual time but now I'm just displaying the date okay uh, and you can see those options with IntelliSense so I don't really need to show it to you or explain them to you um, this is the same as last tutorials the position um, this is new the, the velocity I'm going to be showing you more about this later and why we need this later on in our programming tutorials um, our spray font we're going to be using the font to actually draw the text of the screen our move speed and um, horizontal and vertical to let it, us know if the text is moving horizontally or vertically. In our initialize, we initialize the position as in the last tutorial, and nothing has changed. The font, uh, in, the, in the low content, we load the font, our current font from our, fo our sprite font tutorial. Our updates method, we use key state to get keyboard.getState and the key state variable is stated right here so it's called key state so we do key state equals keyboard I guess state and we're using the gamepad support as well so if they're pressing right on the gamepad or they're pressing right on the on the key on the keyboard then the velocity um we, we set velocity x is equal to the move speed times game time dot elapsed time dot total seconds you already know what that does and then we set vertical to false and horizontal to true because we're moving horizontal on the x axis on the x axis and then the same thing goes right here if um we're pressing left then velocity x is equal to negative move speed and everything else right here vertical is equal to false and horizontal is equal to true if they're pressing up then velocity dot y is equal to negative move speed and if they're pressing down then velocity y is equal to move speed at um, times the total seconds right now why do we um, why don't we just do like maybe wondering why don't we just put um, position dot x is equal to move speed or plus equals move speed well you're gonna see later on and this is more effective when you're doing gravity and such um, you could get around doing this velocity thing but this is recommended so um, we're basically saying if it's horizontal 
then we stop the y velocity and if it's vertical then we stop the x velocity so then it doesn't move diagonally so we say the position x plus equals the velocity and the position y plus equals the velocity y now what we just did there is that when we press say we press a down button every single time it loops we since we said velocity equal to y then every single time it loops then it will add the velocity y to position dot y so we'll keep on moving down the screen without us holding down the down button on our keyboard and this is what we generally want for our program and if you really don't understand it then when you finish typing the code then you'll actually see how the motion works and if you have any questions comment below or inbox me so now for our boundaries for it to hit off the walls so we say um, that if position dot x is less than zero or position dot x is greater than graphics dot graphics device dot viewport dot width subtract font dot measure string date dot x so you guys are like what did you just say right there okay so I'll show you um basically we need to find the the farthest point on the of our word so basically, if you can follow, um, basically, oh, I, you can't see the mouse on it, but we have to find where, you see where it says 12? Basically, we need to find where it says, um, we need to find the far edge of this actual string. And this is how we actually find it. So basically, when we put graphics.graphicsvice.viewport.width, it's basically giving us the actual screen width, right? And then we say the screen width subtract um, the font dot measure string so if it gets how long the string is um, and date that is the name of the string that we've actually specified so remember date is equal to date time now dot long string so we converted the date to the string so what the measure string does is it measures how long the actual word will be when it's drawn to the screen and then we have to measure it how like how wide it is so basically this is just saying that when it when it reaches the edge of the screen then it has to do something so then when it reaches the edge of the screen if velocity x is less than zero then we know that we've hit the left part of the screen and we need to move towards the right part of the screen so this is where this comes in else that means the right edge is at the right end of the screen and then we have to start moving towards the left hand side of the screen. The same goes on for here, um, whereas we just change all the x's to y's and we look for the height this time and we find the measure string but we find the y coordinate of the measure string, how tall the actual words are. And then if velocity y is less than zero, then we move down towards the screen. And if the velocity um if the velocity is greater than zero, meaning that um it hit the bottom of the screen, that means we have to move towards the top of the screen. And if that doesn't make sense to you, remember to comment or PM me. Now for the drawing, the drawing method is pretty straightforward. Sprite branch dot draw string. We're using this font. With the string we're drawing is a date string. The position on the screen is at the position vector. And we're going to draw it in the white color or any color that you want to specify. And our final program ends up like this. So when I press the right key, I let go. It's still, it's still moving. When it hits the right part of the screen, it starts coming back. And that is it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and look for the next tutorial tomorrow at 12 a.m. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and bye.